the greatest all-around player of all time. What does this mean exactly? When we're talking about this subject, I think most people mean it in terms of a variety of elite abilities. Is he a top scorer, a top passer, a top rebounder, a top defender, and so on? Usually, when this debate comes up, you'll hear two players get mentioned quite a bit, LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Let me make this clear. This video is not intended to be a criticism against either of those players. Both Jordan and LeBron are immensely talented in a variety of ways, and each of those players have a legitimate argument for that title. But the thing is, I think Larry Bird's case is just as strong, but for some reason, he's almost never given that same level of recognition on this particular topic. Now let me break down the main reasons why I think Bird's case is so strong. For one, Larry Bird has no weaknesses in his game. Think about how rare that actually is, even when considering some of the GOAT candidates. It can be argued that Michael Jordan's weakness was his three-point shooting, especially earlier in his career. LeBron James is a below-average free-throw shooter. Magic Johnson wasn't a great defensive player. Wilt Chamberlain and Shaquille O'Neal were terrible free-throw shooters. In several seasons, Kobe Bryant wasn't very efficient from the field and Bill Russell was a very limited scorer. On the other hand, Larry Bird was an elite scorer overall. He was tremendously efficient from the field, from three-point range, and from the free throw line. He was an elite rebounder, especially considering his position. He was an elite passer, he was a clutch performer, and he was an NBA All-Defender. I challenge you to find one thing that Larry Bird wasn't good at. The other major reason is Larry was arguably a top 10 player of all time in several major categories. First off, scoring. When you consider the greatest scores in NBA history and factor in a player's scoring efficiency, Larry Bird simply has to be in that conversation. He had a career scoring average of 24.3, which is only slightly behind the career scoring average of Kobe Bryant. He also has the second most 50-40-90 seasons in NBA history, trailing only Steve Nash. And Nash was never the 25 to 30 points per game player that Bird usually was. Over a five-year stretch from 1985 to 1989, Larry Bird averaged 28 points on 50-40-90 percentages. That level of sustained scoring efficiency is basically unmatched by the rest of NBA history. So again, he's arguably a top 10 scorer of all time. He's also arguably a top 10 rebounder in NBA history, when you consider the position he played. According to StatMuse, among small forwards, Bird has the fourth highest rebounds per game average in NBA history at 10.1. The thing is, every other player in the top eight spots all played in the 1960s, which was easily the most inflated rebounding era in the game's history, and that was due to lower field goal percentages and a faster pace of play. The closest small forward to Larry Bird in rebounds per game who didn't play in the 1960s was Sean Marion, who wasn't even close to Larry's numbers. He was able to accomplish this thanks to his 6'9 frame, thanks to his all-out play style, and because of his intelligence on the court. In clutch situations, he dominated the boards to an even greater extent. For goodness sake, in the 1984 NBA Finals, Bird averaged 14 rebounds per game over the course of the series, compared to the Lakers' Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who averaged 8.1. In the 1981 Finals, Bird averaged 15.3 rebounds, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the legendary rebounder Moses Malone. When you consider the era and the position he played, Bird is not only a top 10 scorer of all time, but he's also a potential top 10 rebounder of all time. Then you have Bird as a passer. He had creativity and court vision that was very nearly on the level of the great Magic Johnson. At times, it looked as if Bird had eyes in the back of his head with some of the passes he was making. Among small forwards, Larry has the second highest assist per game average of all time 
ahead of Scottie Pippen and trailing only LeBron James. But unlike LeBron James and Scottie Pippen, Bird's assists per game average actually increased in the postseason. When I recently did a video on the top 10 passers of all time, I had Bird as an honorable mention. And good lord, that created a whole bunch of backlash in the comments section. For me, he's in the 11 to 13 range. But at the very least, we can all agree that he's arguably a top 10 passer. Beyond that, there's three-point shooting. Bird is tied for the most three-point contest victories in NBA history with a total of three, which he won in consecutive seasons. In the 1980s, he was regularly among the league leaders in both three-point percentage and in three-pointers attempted. He has every kind of three-point shot in his arsenal, as he could hit them while off balance, he could pull up in transition, and he could catch and shoot. Throw in the fact that he was one of the most clutch three-point shooters to ever live, and yeah, at the very least, Bird has an argument for being a top 10 three-point shooter. So to recap, he's arguably a top 10 scorer all time, a top 10 rebounder, a top 10 passer, and a top 10 three-point shooter. Now Bird is not a top 10 defensive player, but without a doubt in my mind, he's an extremely underrated defensive player. One thing he was known for was always giving his best energy and effort on the defensive end. You're going to be hard pressed to find a substantial amount of footage of Bird being lazy on defense, as his blue collar, grit and grind personality translated seamlessly to the court. Although he wasn't the fastest player on the court, he was extremely quick with his hands, as Bird was regularly among the league leaders in steals per game, as he averaged 1.7 over the course of his career. He was also an above average shot blocker for his position, as he averaged 0.84 over the course of his career, which is actually a higher blocks per game average than proven defensive small forwards like LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard. Bird has three all-defense team selections on his resume, and even finished as high as third overall in the Defensive Player of the Year rankings in 1983. If it wasn't for his humility, he would likely be the NBA's record holder for the most steals in a single game, seeing how he got a total of nine in only three quarters against the Utah Jazz in 1985. Despite sitting out the fourth, Bird was just one steal shy of the illustrious quadruple-double. I promise, I'm not trying to convince you that he was basically Dennis Rodman on the defensive end. But at the very least, Bird was an elite defensive player, who usually isn't recognized as such by modern fans. Again, to sum this all up, Larry Legend had basically no weakness in his game, while being top tier in many different aspects of the game. This is why I believe he has a formidable case for being the most complete basketball player in NBA history. There are some other candidates that I would consider as well. Guys like Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Akeem Olajuwon. But at the end of the day, when all things are considered, Bird might just be my ultimate choice. So what do you guys think? Who's the most complete basketball player of all time? I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.